Welcome in race fans here to the Michigan International Speedway. Well, we're here at Michigan and it is the USRA Sim Speed Shop Cup Series right here. It's the Great Lakes Brewing 250 tonight presented by Jamie Leach. Jason Dobbs and Roger Muth up here in the booth tonight. And Jason, it feels good to be here in the Irish Hills at Michigan International. A full 43 car field on hand here tonight. Yes, sir, Roger. This is going to be one heck of a show, ladies and gentlemen. 43 cars signed in. Michigan speeds well over 200 mile an hour. It's going to get very, very interesting. Yeah, with this many cars and the speeds heading down into turn number one here tonight at 200 plus miles an hour. I'm glad I'm up here in the booth, Dobbs, and not down there on track because I bet the tempers by the end of the night will be flaring. But this two mile track in Michigan, it is a very wide track. Yes, the speeds are going to be upwards into the 200 mile an hour range once we get all 43 cars out there. Right now, Jordan Smith has his 25 machine, as you see on the timing and scoring, at the top of the leaderboard. Brandon Massey, a Rookie of the Year driver, he is sitting second. Aaron Davidson is third, and Tyler uh, Garner right now is fourth. Tommy Cannon is fifth. So you have three rookies already inside the top five spots here tonight. So it is going to be quite interesting to see who's going to be able to do what here from Michigan. Well, it is a brand new season here. The USRA Sim Speed Shop Series about to do action. With just about two minutes to go, though, race fans, in practice, we're going to step away here from the Michigan International Speedway. We're going to get our national anthem blade, and we'll be right back here to bring you the first live qualifying action of the season to see who can be the first pole winner of the year. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly revealed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the Welcome back here, race fans, to Michigan. As the clock hits zero in our first practice session, Jordan Smith is the quick time with Brandon Massey. These drivers are now going to head into qualifying. Dobbs, they're going to have two laps in five minutes to get the fastest laid down time here tonight. Yeah, that's not very much time, but uh, they're going to have to get on the pedal hard and get up towards the front. That's where I would want to be is in the front of this race, all these cars. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one here tonight to see who's going to be on the pole, one of the first drivers out on track, though, would be the driver of the 41 of Dalton Kilrow. Kilrow last year not running a complete schedule with the USRA Cup Series at the time, now rebranded as the Sim Speed Shop Cup Series here for the USRA. And Dalton Kilrow will drive his 41 down off into turns one and, or sorry, three and four here. Kilrow, I've been following his stats along the iRacing platform here the last couple weeks, and the driver of this 41, he has been tearing it up, and it doesn't look like he's going to he's gonna hit the reset button here, and he will go back to pit road to see if he's going to be able to find a better line off of turn number four. 
Here's one of the drivers, though. It's the driver of the seven of Doyle Lawrence. He is making his first ever start with the USRA series, and he brings the seven across the line. He would now be considered on the clock for his first timed lap here at Michigan. Well, looking through the field here is also the man that was on top of the boards. It's the Lowe's entry. It's the Chevrolet here of Jordan Smith in the 25. He had the top time in the practice session, and now currently he is going to be seeing where he's going to slot in here on his lap number one. A couple drivers already have turned in a lap time. Looks like Ryan Jones takes the 91 to the top of the speed charts here with Chase Berry in second. David Camara is third. Where will the 25 here of Jordan Smith come across the line with three minutes left in our qualifying session? He'll go to the eighth fastest time on the board. And we talk about Sim Speed Shop. Well, here's the man. It's Jason Eisenhower in the Sim Speed Shop. Number 36, I believe he'll be on the timing and scoring for all you race fans trying to follow along here to see where Jason Eisenhower will be tonight. He will be listed as the 36 on the timing and scoring and 37 here on our screen when we pan over to this Sim Speed Shop car. Right now, this would be his first time lap. Justin Wilson will now take over the top spot here in Michigan, and Doyle Lawrence will go to the second spot. Now it's Evan Pienta as the board changes as here comes Eisenhower across the start finish line. He'll go 14th quickest on lap number one. Michael Bromley and his throwback to Jimmy Johnson, old seven time. It's going to be the draft top 48 of Michael Bromley, and he had a good second lap of qualifying here. He takes the draft top machine to the second spot. How about Randy Bechtel? This is a brand new driver we haven't seen out of Pennsylvania. It's the driver of the 96. He is making his first ever start here on a Tuesday night. Josiah Millen brings the deck of batteries. East Penn Manufacturing. Number 40 machine across the line, and he'll be shown in the fifth position. Driver didn't get much practice time out there, but currently sitting inside the top five as Roy Fernandez Lopez comes through there, and he is now in the third spot. How about this driver that's out on track now, race fans? He's been away for a little bit. Now he is back. It's the driver of the 99 of Cold Day. He's taken a season off, and he is back here now with the USRA Sim Speed Shop Cup Series, and he is looking to make a name for himself. The driver of that 99 used to drive the 38 for anybody who followed the USRA Cup Series back in the sea air back in the couple seasons ago. He is now going to try and, you know, make a resurgence here. This year, driving the 99 Bass Pro Shop entry. Right now, it was 27th on his first time to lap. Where will he go on his second time to lap? It's a little bit slower. So he'll stay into the 27th position currently. Charles Wimby in the McDonald's 79 is out here. This will be his second lap. Charles making his first ever start here on a Tuesday night, and his qualifying time is good enough for the 21st position. Here's a seasoned veteran. It's the 19. The ASPCA machine driven by Skip Carmen out of Ohio. Currently, Carmen has some of the most, or the longest streak of starting spots, if, you, if I said that correctly, with this series. He right now is 26th on the board. Let's see where he comes across the line here with four seconds left on the clock. He will jump up one position. And that will do it here in our qualifying session for our opening race. We're going to go racing here in just a moment from the Michigan International Speedway. Tonight for your Sim Speed Shop Cup Series, it's the Great Lakes Brewing 250 tonight, presented by Jamie Leach right here on the Turn 3 Racing Network. We appreciate everybody tuning in here on this Tuesday night. While these bad boys start to grid up here, uh, let's take you quickly through your starting lineup. 43 cars are due to start this field here tonight, and this is how they're going to line up. This is your Sim Speed Shop starting lineup. Starting on row number one, it'll be the driver of Jordan Smith in the 25, Whataburger Lowe's Machine. Starting to his outside, it'll be the 16, the young gun of Evan Pienta. Starting behind them on row number two, it'll be the six of Roy Fernandez Lopez. 
Aaron Davidson and his Canterbury 03 machine will start there on row number two. Row number three, it'll be Justin Wilson, one of the most winningest drivers in the Cup Series here. He starts on row three. Next to him, it'll be the driver out of Topton, Pennsylvania. It'll be Josiah Millen. Starting on row number four here tonight, it'll be the Canterbury machine driven by John Mullins and Doyle Lawrence in the number seven. Row five here tonight, it'll be the draft top 48 of Michael Bromley and Randy Bechtel in the 96, making his first ever start. Row number six, it'll be the 81 of Dan Dill and the 14 of Jeff Price. Row seven, it's big country Cole Haas in that 29 machine here tonight. It's the Cone Coolers driver. Luke LaFaro out of California will roll off out of the seventh row. Eighth row looks like this. It's the Sim Speed Shop driver of Jason Eisenhower and the Pure Ink, number 10, of Chase Berry. Row number nine, it'll be the 65, the old shed of Brandon Massey, the number five of Brandon Hartwell. Row number 10, it'll be the 54, Tyler Gunner making his first start, and the 91 of late night Ryan Jones. Starting in the 11th row here tonight, it'll be the night, or the... 78 of Charles Wimby. Cody Sleeper is going to start here on this row also in the 01 machine. Starting on row 12, it'll be the number 30 of David Carmen and the ALS machine driven by Robert Dudley. Starting on row number 13, it'll be the 04 of Danny Valenzuela and the number 19 of Skip Carmen. Starting on row 14, it'll be the 22 out of Nebraska. It'll be Jared Haggardorn, and here's the engineer himself, the 99 of Cold Day. Starting on row 15, it'll be little Jeff Pogo and 41 of Dalton Kilrow. Row 16, it's the 9 of Stephen Holmes and then it's Trenton Sneal in the 08 machine. 17th row, it's the 71 of Andrew Beach and Tommy Cannon in the 47 machine. Row 18, it's the 88 of Justin Winters and Lee Staples in the 26 machine. Row 19, it's Frank Winesett and Mike Barons. Row 20 here tonight is Joshua Kane and Gene Wolfe. Row 21, it's Eric Holly and Jeff Poling. Row 22, starting shotgun to the field. It's his driver out of Pennsylvania, the 21 of Miroslav Mach. That's your 43-car field here at Michigan. Dobbs, I hope you're ready because we are about to go green flag racing this time by. I hope you're ready. You sound like you're out of breath, buddy. Let's pull those belts tight right here. Let's go. Yeah, 120 laps, I believe. Put it on the ticker here this time by. We will go for... And that's going to equal out to our 250 laps here tonight in the Great Lakes Brewing 250 tonight presented by Jamie Leach in your Sim Speed Shop USRA Cup Series coming to the green flag here for the first time this season. The iRacing pace car is down and away. We are racing for the first time here in the Irish Hills on a Tuesday night. Everybody trying to come up to speed for the first time this season and down into turn one. It will still be the 25 of Smith to the inside, to the outside. It's still Evan Pienta. Pienta going to lose a little bit of ground as Jordan Smith will slide up in front of him as they all exit turn number two. They're going to race down the backstretch here. That six machine there of Roy Fernandez in the good wrench car getting a huge push by Justin Wilson. Wilson will shove Fernandez down to the bottom here, and they will come out of turn four for the first time this season. Who will lead the first lap? Will it be the low Chevrolet, or will it be the six of Fernandez at the line? Lap number one going to go to Jordan Smith. So just like that, lap one of the season is in the books here. Dobbs, as they race side by side, neither of these drivers right now seem like they can get a little bit of an edge. No, these cars got that draft package working real well, and... Uh... I don't know, but if I see a black car with a plus good wrench on it, I know that car is going to be up front in the draft package here. Yeah, it looks like that's the 58 there. Wilson going from the inside lane to the outside. Millen's going to go a little bit higher. He's going to run about a lane up. They are three wide, a little bit deeper in the field, and they figured it out real quick that it wasn't going to work. Coming back across the line, it will be Jordan Smith here. He will lead this lap tonight. So that's two laps just like that here in the books around this big two-mile raceway in the Irish Hills of Michigan International. It's such a big, long, wide track. Good three-wide racing, sometimes four. Yeah, you talked about the three-wide racing. There is the 54. That's Tyler Gunner and the 78. They're a Wimby 
And I believe that's the 04 Danny Valenzuela and the UPS man, the 30 of Carmen. They were actually all three wide at one point back here in this little group of cars. This is back here all the way for the 23rd position right now. The 04 driven by Danny Valenzuela out of Utah with the Rays Energy sponsorship on that 04 machine. Brand new colors for the driver out of Utah. And right now, Valenzuela is trying to bring his Rays Energy car to the front of the field here tonight. Be a good thing to see Danny Valenzuela get up there to the top 10. Yeah, right now, one of the drivers off the pace just a little bit. It's the driver out of Missouri. It's the 81. The Bomb and Fuels 81 machine of Dan Dill. Right now, he is 19 seconds off the pace of your race leader, which is now the 16 of Evan Pienta. It'll be his second lap he has led here tonight, and they are still throwing the haymakers at the front. Here comes the Canterbury machine driven by Davidson to the inside he's got one of his teammates up here inside the top five that'll be the 64 of John Mullins both the drivers driving out of the Canterbury stables as we work down the backstretch here on lap number five here comes Aaron Davidson he's getting the push now from Roy Fernandez these boys just will not roll over and say die looks like Wilson's gonna back off early going into turn three a little bit Millen's gonna chase it up the hill his black 40 machine gonna ride it up top Kyle Larson likes to ride it up top. Josiah Miller, one of the dirt racers that likes to come out and play on the asphalt sometimes. And right now he is showing those skills as he rolls that outside lane down in one and two here once again. Yeah, as Josie would say, he's trying to rip the lip. What is it? Rip the lip. Is that what he says, Roger? Rip the lip is for sure. And he went right up against the wall there that time out of turn two. Danny Valenzuela a little bit farther back. He just saw him dive to the inside out of turn two. He will try and take over the 21st position from Charles Wimby. Right now, Wimby was, is running in this 22nd position with his McDonald's Chevrolet. Jason Eisenhower running in the 14th spot. He is following the draft top number 48 of Michael Bromley. So this Sim Speed Shop driver of Eisenhower out of Hershey, Pennsylvania, owner and operator of the Sim Speed Shop. I believe a couple of these drivers in this league have button boxes as we start to single file things out here down the backstretch. That all those button boxes though have been provided by the Sim Speed Shop. They don't just make button boxes, race fans. They make steering wheels. And this driver right here has one of those steering wheels. Yeah, it's a questionable if he can actually see over the steering wheel or not. But Jeff Pogo just got in one of those brand new Sim Speed Shop steering wheels, and he is putting it to the test here tonight at Michigan. Right now, the driver of this 24 of Jeff Pogo runs all the way back here in the 32nd position. Justin Winters right there with him. Stephen Holmes is with him. Joshua Kane, Larry Poling, and Lee Staples all right here in this little cluster of cars as they work down the backstretch here on lap number eight. So it's seven laps in, Dobbs, but we have seen a lot of good side-by-side -side racing out there tonight. Yeah, that's uh, one main thing about Michigan Speedway. You can uh, get wide and handsome and race side-by-side -side and push each other, draft each other going down the straightaway. And so far, these guys have been pretty clean. Started out to be a good race. Yeah, here comes Jordan Smith once again to the outside of this 16 machine. Look at Josiah Millen really diving off into turn number one. He almost got to the back bumper there of the 58. The Margarita man of Justin Wilson. But he wasn't, well, not that he wasn't able to. He elected to lift a little bit there after he drove it in real hard. And he's going to give up a position here to Davidson and Mullen. So those two Canterbury team cars now have found each other on the outside lane. They are running fourth. And, well, call it fifth or sixth. And how about this man? Here comes the 29, Kong Coolers Operation. That is Ira Kohlhaas, the big country machine to the outside with the big Kong gorilla on the hood. He wants to come to the front here tonight and get himself a lap led. We are nine laps officially into the season opener. Yeah, big country there. He uh, he knows how to play his draft right, real well. Uh, I raced with him on Wednesday nights, and uh, he can get to the front real quick. He's the one to keep an eye on here after a while, race fans. Yeah, now him and Millen are working down to the inside. It seems like that inside lane may have gone away. Maybe the tires, Dobbs, are starting to go away. You're a driver, as you know, you are on Wednesday night, as you said. Do the tires here, especially with the cup cars, go away pretty quick? A lot of these guys said they were going to flat foot it most of the night. Yeah, they do. They fall pretty fast, and you just got to kind of ride the rim up there best you can, and Get a slide job like the 58 or the yeah the 58 of Justin right here is going to do Margaritaville baby. Margaritaville here of Justin Wilson is trying to take over the lead. 
Remember, last year he won the most races, not only on Tuesday night when it was the Xfinity car, he also went out and won the most races on Thursday night with the Cup car. And this year, he is trying to now lead his first lap of the season. We've had two leaders, it's Pienta and Smith, and it's gonna be Smith once again at the line. So we stay with only two leaders. Two leaders, and you talk about big country cohorts there. He's uh, he's eyeing inside and outside, trying to make a move back here, running that sixth position. Yeah, he's driving right now, right alongside one of his teammates out of the Bohica Esports. That's John Mullins to the 64 down to the inside, and Ira Kolhaas on the outside, his Kong Coolers machine. They're trying to work themselves around the 16 of MMP Enta who is right there. Oh, Pienta is going to get his nose taken off just about there out of turn four as Wilson slid up there into the third position. You're starting to see these guys now start to single file out here as we're on this longer green flag run. As you look off the back here of your leader, you see the whole entire field has started to string itself out. Somebody down onto the apron there. I think that may have actually been the driver of the 40, I think that might have been Millen, or maybe it was just behind Millen. That was, it was Luke LaFaro in the number 20 DC Solar machine out of California. He is running in the 11th spot. He hit the apron with that 20 machine down in turn one, and up the track it shot him, but they were able to hold on to things. Biggest dropper of the race so far is the six of Roy Fernandez. Started inside the top five, and now he is outside the top 10, running in the 12th spot. Dobbs has the driver perspective. The new version seven tires. If you beat them up on the early runs, you're gonna drop like a rock through the middle to late of this run. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Especially if you're an aggressive driver that likes to, you know, make your way up to the front early in the stage in the race. Uh, a lot of guys that conserve their tires, uh, it shows because you fall back towards the field and other ones come flying through. That's a uh, that's a big key right here. 120 lap race. You got to stay calm and save your stuff or uh, you're not going to make it to the end. Yeah, so your whole top 10 is single filed out. You have to go back here to the 14 of Jeffrey Price. Look into the inside here of Fernandez. That's the 12th position exchanging hands there. Jeff Price, one of the drivers, always going to get a little loose there. Then it looks like the 6 of Fernandez is going to drop the uh, error onto the back of that machine. So uh, Price going to have to now try and rebound. Price, one of those drivers, as I was saying, though, who does save his tires for a long run. So don't be surprised as, you know, he just gave up that 12th position with that battle and he's going to live to turn another lap. He will just fall back in line here right behind the five of Brandon Hartwell. And then he will try to get right back up there into the mix of things at the front of this field where Jordan Smith is still continuing to lead the way. So it's Smith, Davidson, Wilson, Cole Haas, and Mullins. Your top five currently here after 16 laps here in the season opener from the Michigan International Speedway. Dalton Kilroe running back here in the 19th spot. He just got passed up by the snap on 01 machine there of Cody Sleeper. This is Cody Sleeper's second year here with the USRA guys. And he is right now running inside the top 20, but it's a long way to the front this many cars. And just sitting inside the top 20, it'll be the driver of the 30 of David Carmen. And you know what? We got to take our hat off here to David Carmen. Works for the United States Postal Service. And, well, those guys, with everything going on all over, not just the United States, all over the world. So all the carriers out there are on the front lines, and they're still working to deliver our mail around the country. You know, I have shipped out a ton of our... Uh, turn three racing merchandise that we have here for sale you know whether it's our koozies our stickers our shirts and I, I always ship the United States Post Office and they get it there at a fashionably reasonable time even though with everything going on right now so our hats are off to David Carmen and the whole United States Postal Service and everybody working here around the world yeah that's a big thank you to him and that bunch there One of the bigger movers here of the race. It's the driver of that 65 of Brandon Massey. He is sitting right now in the ninth position. And as he is looking to the inside of the 40 of Josiah Millen, the driver of the old shed out of, oh, Millen going to make a little contact there as I think he got a little arrow tight coming off of four behind Massey. That old shed machine, though, is starting to come to the front of the field.
You can tell which driver's really been saving their tires here, Roger. Yeah, just checking up. Where is that Roy Fernandez machine? You know, he is sitting right there, the good wrench number six. Remember, he was the uh, has lost the most positions here tonight so far. See if he can work his way back up into the front. Everybody here looks like they're running a little bit different line, but they are all single filed out. You got to go back here to Skip Carmen in the 19 out of Ohio as he's battling with the Pennsylvania driver of Randy Bechtel. Carmen going to go up. I think he may have just touched the wall with his... Uh, Ford Mustang. We'll have to see if there's any damage when the camera pans back around here. Danny Valenzuela is going to sneak to the inside and I believe there is a little damage to the right front of that Ford Mustang as Valenzuela is going to chase it up the hill and then Skip Carmen is going to have to check up just a little bit. Yeah, I saw a little smoke there. I didn't know what was going on. I had to switch camera angles and uh, definitely hit the wall there. So now here comes the 26 of sta or Staples down to the inside as we got a caution flag waving here. As this is on the front stretch here, a bunch of drivers. It looks like oh. Millen in the 40. Cold Day is going to go around. He's going to collect a couple of them. Well, heavy contact for Cold Day. Josiah Millen was sta sitting sideways there. The five of Brandon Hartwell, heavy damage in his machine. Looks like Cold Day also has a bunch of damage. We will have to throw it back here in a second once we get the replay queued up for you race fans to actually see what just transpired uh, here in Michigan. Our first caution of the season going to come out here on lap 21. Let's cue the replay. I think we have it all loaded up for us. As there we see Millen to the outside. What happens? Millen bounces it straight off the wall and goes to chase the car. And Hartwell, nowhere to go. He's involved. Then you see a couple others. I think that's Cody Sleepers involved in this. And Larry Poling is going to come to a complete stop. Cold Day is involved. The 01 a Sleeper, the 49 ALS machine of Robert Dudley is involved. We're going to have to give it another look back here and, and find out as we from the spotter stand. You see it all kind of unfold back there. As see Cold Day come in and loses control. He gets a little help going around into the outside wall. Nowhere for Gene Wolf to go. In, or that's not Gene Wolf. That's the 47 of Tommy Cannon, actually. Looks like Josiah just kind of come up a little bit and hit the outside wall, Roger. Yeah, really caused some chaos. So that that is definitely some chaos here on this... Uh, First run of the season, and Pitt Road is busy. So it looks like it's probably going to be a four-tire stop here for a lot of your drivers as Jordan Smith's going to come in, and he is going to hit Pitt Road sideways in that Lowe's machine. As he's going to blow his pit stall, he's going to have to back it up. That's going to cost him some time on Pitt Road. It looks like Roy Fernandez also... They're going to go through his pit stall and have to back up here tonight. Yeah, I was just about to say I'm no Larry McReynolds, but I would definitely take four tires and fuel on this stop. So it looks like a huge race off pit road. Who is going to be the winner? It's going to be the Canterbury 03 machine of Davison. Leading off pit road, then it's going to be Ira Kohlhaas, Justin Wilson, Jordan Smith, John Mullins, Doyle Lawrence. Evan Pienta, Brandon Massey, Luke LaFaro, Chase Berry, your top 10 drivers here after that first caution flag waving tonight. We got to thank everybody for tuning in here on the Turn 3 Racing Network tonight as we watch the USRA Sim Speed Shop Cup Series tonight. And it's the Great Lakes Brewing 250 by Jamie Leach. A full field here to take the green flag. It looks like we had one driver a little late to the dance, and that was Mike Barron's in the 77 machine. Missed the green flag but he is out there on track now he's a couple laps down but he is running in the 43rd machine or 43rd spot as Brandon Hartwell is also down on pit road right now with his five machine Josiah Millen Cody Sleeper and Cole Day all on pit road trying to get some damage fixed to their machines to see if they can get back out there tonight We we'll have to send a little PM after a while to Joe Zion and ask him if everything's all right on him. Well, while we're 
here under this caution flag. Let's see if we can get a quick word in with one of the drivers that were wrapped up in this uh, yellow flag. Let's see if we can talk to the 99 here, Bass Pro Shops of Cold Day. Cold Day, you got a copy? It's Muth and Dobbs up here in the booth. Yeah, hey, I got you. Yeah, you got me, my friend. Well, hey, it's the first time back here with the USRA Cup Series, and it doesn't look like that Bass Pro Shops uh, going to be a winning car here tonight. Yeah, unfortunately not. Uh, tell us what happened out there on the front stretch. Uh, just started off saving the tires early in the run. And was, uh, just make my way through, making up some spots just by having better tires. I seen the smoke, and then I think someone kind of blinked out for me, and I was going to go low and just hug the white line and all of a sudden they popped back in i had to avoid them and just caught the grass and got loose and went right back up the track well how much damage is actually done to this zl1 chevrolet uh, it's quite a bit it looks like it's all in the rear i think so hopefully it doesn't affect me too too bad but i got it all fixed so we'll have to see how it does here well good luck the rest of the way here cole we'll put you back down here in the corner of opinions and uh, try not to uh, ruffle any more fenders out there. Sure we will try. Well, there you heard it. <laughs> Just kind of got down into the grass, nowhere to go, and around that car went, kind of collected himself. Yeah, that was definitely nowhere for him to go, and it's very different for me to watch Cole Day being back in the field like that. I'm used to seeing Cole run up front, and uh, that might have been the problem, Roger. I don't know. I'm not for sure. Yeah, well, let's see if the lights on the iRacing pace car, they should go out this time by here at Michigan. And there they do. The pace car lights will go out, so we're going to double them up here two by two. It's going to be Aaron Davidson, Ira Cole Haas, Justin Wilson, and Jordan Smith. Your two front rows here on the restart on lap 26 when we go back racing. It'll be 95 laps to go, and Dobbs, it has just been an amazing start here from the Michigan International Speedway. Yeah, I'm real impressed with these guys. They ran pretty good side-by-side -side for about three to five laps, and then they singled out, and then we still had a little bit of side-by-side -side action. But they went 23 laps out of first caution. That was a pretty good job. Uh, going to be real interesting, though, is the strategy, if they run a green flag run, how that's going to play out. Uh, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, we were about halfway into that run before we saw the yellow flag come out. We were just starting to see the tire wear really come into factor here to see, you know, who was coming and who was going. We know the driver of the six of Roy Fernandez was one of those drivers that were starting to drop through the field on that long run. And Brandon Massey was going the other direction, the old Shed 65 machine out of Ohio. He was starting to drive himself up through the field here on this long run. So two different strategies. We'll see if it's going to be any different when we go back green flag racing here. Aaron Davison and Ira Kohlhaas on the front row. Looking through the field, it looks like currently we still have 38 drivers out on the lead lap. Jared Hagerdorn looks like he may have just lost his internet connection. But everybody is still on the racing server, we're calling, as the green flag comes back out here. Back onto the hammer. And it actually looks like a huge start there for Aaron Davidson. He's going to single file out a lot of these guys. You're going to have to go all the way back here to the seven of Lawrence, Mullins, and Massey till you find the side-by-side -side battles just outside the top five currently. Yeah, this is the time you got fresh tires. Maybe pull a slide job on the inside, pick up a couple of positions. Well, they go side by side. Massey's going to lift a little bit. That's going to check the middle lane up there. Chase Berry going to have to lift off the throttle. Evan Pienta having to lift. Now it's the 65 and the 64 as they go side by side out of turn number four. Aaron Davidson will lead the first lap back to the green flag racing here. Now they're starting to single file out. It's going to be the 65 there of Massey in sixth. Mullins will go seventh. And then Evan Pienta was looking to see if he could get around the 10 of Chase Berry, but he was not able to. So they will go back to the single file. Here comes Luke LaFaro. He thought for a moment to go swing it down to the inside. Talk about swinging. Well, here comes the 65. Massey to the outside of the 7 of Lawrence. And they had a huge run going down the backstretch into turn 3 on Jordan Smith. And both of them just had to check up. Massey going to check up a little more than Lawrence. And Lawrence takes back the position. Here comes also the 30 of Carmen. He is trying to find his way into the top 10 with his UPS machine. Here comes the 58. Justin Wilson on the inside. He wants to take the lead right here. Well, it's 5 o'clock somewhere, says Justin Wilson. And I'm looking through it. Wilson still does not have a lap led in this race. And we're nearing 30 laps 
into it. I'm rather shocked that these drivers have been able to hold Justin Wilson at bay for as long as they have, but will he be denied this time by? Let's see as Brandon Massey is starting to come to the back bumper of the 58 Margaritaville car at the line. Give it to Aaron Davidson once again, so Wilson's going to have to see if he can get that machine out in front. Maybe Brandon Massey almost making contact down here in turn one with his teammate of Cole Haas. That's not what you want to do, and that's not what you want to see as a car owner. No, absolutely not. Not when two cars get together at the same team. That would be terrible. But yeah, it's just it's a juggernaut here at the front of the field. Nobody is able to go anywhere. They are all just kind of locked onto each other here. Out of turn four, they come roaring. They are stumbling. They are bumbling down towards the front straightaway here. Across the line. Now Justin Wilson, race fans, will lead his first lap of the season. He can officially retire now. <laughs> Oh, Brandon Massey got a little loose there going into turn two. Yeah, and I'm looking out. Colas is going to scrape the wall out of turn number two. Contact between the two teammates gives Massey a little rear end damage, and maybe Colas now has a little right front damage. And at this two mile track, you do not want right front damage, and he does. The call coolers 29 of Ira Colas does have some right front damage. I don't think the gorilla on the hood of that. Colin Cooler's machine is going to be too happy. Massey has started to drop two through the middle as they put him three wide. Mullins to the inside, and Lawrence going to be to the outside. Mullins will take the position, but here comes Massey fighting back in the middle groove. Oh, they're real close there. I don't know how they didn't wreck, Raj. Yeah, that's just the class of the drivers here tonight on Tuesday night in the Sim Speed Shop Cup Series. Now Justin Wilson, though, has the lead for the last two times. It'll be three laps that he's been out front this time by. And John Mullins trying to get to the inside here. Doyle Lawrence out of turn number four this time. But Lawrence got the 10 of Barry in his pure ink machine out of Florida on that outside groove. That 10 is really quick. And this track really excels to his, we'll call it, strengths. As it's two mile wide track where you can really bump draft. You get good runs. That's where Chase Berry is good, and that's where we're at here tonight. Berry runs in the eighth position. Right behind him, Evan Pienta in that 16 machine. Just kind of roaming around, still inside the top 10 as Luke LaFaro to the outside here on Pienta, trying to take the ninth spot. Yeah, I'm, real, I'm real impressed with how these drivers have been handling this race. Going single file. Here comes the 64. John Mullins on the inside of Massey. Looking to pick up a position. Yeah, you saw how Massey was driving his teammate, Elira Kohlhaas, and see how he is able to uh, hang on. And it looks like the uh, 41 of Dalton Kilrow has a motor expired here as he was wrapped up in that first incident and he is down very slow on the apron. A lot of front end damage as the motor expires and it looks like he will be able to get down to pit road possibly here as we stay green flag. Oh, four wide, three wide. I believe that's the 48 of Bromley coming out of turn number four. That was the 19 of Skip Carmen, And I think to the outside, that was Lee Staples. And they made contact with Bromley that right front's got a little crinkled up, and I believe the 19 of Carmen was the car he made contact with there. I think Carmen's car is all right, but Bromley's going to suffer a little bit of damage, and we talked about it just a moment ago when I recall Haas made contact with the driver out there, how it's going to hamper the performance. Now that's Chevrolet. That's a three wide again. Danny Valenzuela's going to go up the track. Oh, heavy contact. So Bromley goes three wide with Danny Valenzuela. Throws her in there, and it looks like Valenzuela is going to lose a bunch of positions. I don't see any damage. There is some right front damage actually on that Ray's Energy 04 machine of Valenzuela here tonight. Maybe Bromley's a little bit upset he scratched that paint after him being a paint designer. He uh, had a little frustration building up there. Yeah, nobody ever wants to scratch a fresh paint job out of the booth, but he... Uh, puts a couple scratches, a couple dents and ruffles on that 48 machine. He runs currently in the 17th position, so it's still a good night here in the early stages, but we're not even halfway into this one. Out front here to lead another one. It'll be Wilson's seventh lap. He has been out front, and Aaron Davidson is just sitting there in the 03. This is a scenario we have seen all from last season. It's been Wilson and Davidson when Davidson was a part-time runner, and he was here with the USRA 
Cup Series that they were 1-2 and two or 3-4. and four. They were always in the top five as it looks like the 25 there of Smith is going to give a good shove to Ivor Kohlhaas going down the straightaway into three. And it looks like Kohlhaas actually going to lose the nose of the 29. Here comes Jordan Smith. He's going to go to the inside with his Lowe's 25 machine. But it looks like Kohlhaas will carry the momentum of the Kong Cooler machine back into the third spot. 26. Uh, Lee Staples on the inside of Bromley. Trying to pick up a position. Looks like he started 36 all the way up to 18. That's a pretty big pickup. Dobbs, who is the biggest mover so far of the race? Do you have that? Uh, I would want to say it would be Massey or Ira Kohlhaas, but I think it might be Lee Staples. I'm not for sure. Now, right now, two of those drivers still running inside the top six. Staples back there into the 18th position, so a couple guys tying in positions currently, and your top 10 have all single filed out. It's Joshua Kane in the 13, and I believe that is the 96 of Randy Bechtel. They are the only two that are side-by-side side right now. You see everybody kind of running different lines here at Michigan as oh the 13 of Kane gonna go sideways out of turn number two he will catch that 13 Hulu machine but he is gonna lose the position lose the battle for the time being with Randy Bechtel but he will be able to hang on to that and who Lou did he hang on to that that was a nice save right there uh Roger uh, real quick uh, gotta give a big shout out to our buddy Greg O'Berry just sent a big picture of us here on a 65-inch TV screen. So uh, we're, we're everywhere right now, Roger. That's right. All 51 live viewers that are tuning in right now, we appreciate everybody tuning in here to the Turn 3 Racing Network tonight to watch the Sim Speed Shop USRA Cup Series. It's the Great Lakes Brewing 250 presented tonight by Jamie Leach, and it's been a good one so far. Just one caution flag here in the first 39 laps, coming to complete lap 39, that is, anyway. And it is still Justin Wilson out front. It's still Davison sitting there in second. Ira Kohlhaas is still third. Jordan Smith running the Lowe's machine there in fourth. And John Mullins runs in the fifth position. Here comes the 16 of Evan Pienta. He's looking to the inside here on Boyle Dorrance. He was... They've been just kind of battling here for this position kind of like every other lap it seems like the 16 gets a good run he tries to dive it to the inside here on the 7 of Doyle but he's just not able to make the pass and once again it shows that that high line that Doyle Lawrence was running will prevail once again yeah, that outside line got the momentum tires are worn a little bit so you're gonna have to hook up you want to run that inside line you got to pull that slide job to pass pass here it's going to be interesting later on in this race. I keep saying it, but uh, it's going to be huge if somebody can get a, get some help, get on the inside, and start working their way up towards the front. Sort of like a Ricky Bobby slingshot? Yeah, something like that. Him and uh, Cal Naughton Jr. ought to hook up. Right now, watching the driver of the 04 of Valenzuela again with his Ray's Energy machine. He is back here. He has fallen all the way down to the 28th position. He is one spot in front of the driver out of Ohio of Eric Holly. Right now behind Holly running in the 30th position. It's the Sim Speed Shop 36 of Jason Eisenhower hailing out of Hershey, Pennsylvania. He has a lot of damage to that Sim Speed Shop machine. I don't think a button box is going to help the rear end of this uh, 36 machine tonight. So it looks like Jason Eisenhower is going to have to try and limp hold this Sim Speed Shop machine tonight. Yeah, it's always frustrating as a driver. you got a beat up car and you're fast. And I still got a long way to go so you're just trying to point right it out it's uh, it gets frustrating but uh every point every position counts in championships yeah and it's a long season there is no chase for the cup it is straight up points racing here with the usra sim speed shop cup series and i'm watching tommy cannon in the mission 22 47 here tonight we talked about beat up cars tommy has got a beat up ford mustang right now he is limping along he will be the next car on the chopping block as Justin Wilson is hunting him down about a second and a half faster a lap. And it looks like Tommy going to go down to the bottom. He's going to allow your leaders of Justin Wilson to go right on by on that outside lane. He doesn't want to interfere with the fierce battle between the Margaritaville 58 and the Canterbury 03 as they go down into turn number three. There's another Canterbury car. It's John Mullins' machine. He is sitting there in the third position, and it's a gaggle back here. It's uh, Cole Haas down to the inside. Chase Berry trying to get around him. Cole Haas trying to get back to the outside. He'll get a push by Evan Pienta, and he'll slot himself right in front of the seven of Doyle Lawrence. So 
It looks like Cole Haas' car here on this long run may be losing a little speed with that right front fender kind of tore up. Uh, maybe kind of heating the right front up and the car's handling is going away. Yeah, it's amazing what little bit of damage can hurt these cars. Aero force and downforce, it's, uh, it really is amazing. You got to be real careful with them and not beat them up bad. It's uh, something you got to go with. Yeah, it looks like also going another lap down to be the number 77 of Mike Barron's in the Mission 22 machine also. He is currently six laps down, running in the 40th position, and he's just going to back out of the throttle. He really, you know, doesn't want to interfere either. So a lot of uh, respectful racing going on out there on track. With, you know, maybe a lap down car just kind of getting out of the way, doesn't want to interfere with anything. And uh, Luke LaFaro, though, says lap car. I just want to get into the top 10 here tonight as he looks to the inside of the 91 of Ro or Ryan Jones and Roy Fernandez right there. Luke LaFaro trying to break into the top 10 for the first time here tonight. And he's going to slide up out of turn number four. He'll take the 10th position. So the DC Solar Machine coming to the top 10 now. A little jockeying for position down the front straight away. Yeah, Dodds, if I told you that the driver of the 20 doesn't even have a driver's license, but yet still competes on a weekly schedule here on iRacing with the USRA Cup Series. Uh, oh, somebody big, heavy contact into the outside yeah. wall, and that's uh, the Aaron Davidson Canterbury 03 machine. Didn't get to see how hard he hit the wall, but it looks like it messed the car up pretty good. Yeah, he was riding right behind Justin Wilson in that second position. And uh, when you lose the nose of this car, it just straight pushes. And that Canterbury machine went up into the outside wall very hard. He goes from second all the way to the 11th spot. Here comes Ryan Jones in his hard white claw seltzer machine. I heard he was uh, doing some uh, uh, beer shotguns with hard seltzer. I don't know if that really counts as a man card kind of thing. But I guess if hard seltzer is your drink. Uh, Dobbs, I know you enjoy hard seltzer. I've never even heard of that before. Oh, don't lie to the millions that are watching you. <laughs> yeah, no, I no, it's all rowdy energy for me and uh, Bush Light, baby. I had a couple of those today when I was out in the garage when the driver of the 40 of Josiah Millen, who is still out there, stopped over. We had a couple of them as we worked on his Subaru. Right now, we're going to look like we're going to have to pull that deck of batteries 40 machine into the garage tomorrow after this one. That Chevrolet is pretty tore up here tonight. He is running still on the lead lap, but he is back into... It looks like the 36th position after starting tonight inside the top five. So the top three now out there on track after all that uh, hecticness happened there as the 03 of Davison was into the wall. It's Wilson still leading the way, but now it's John Mullins in second, Brandon Massey running in the third position, and I'm surprised that the Massey machine is able to hang on as well as he has been the that 65 running third remember has some right rear damage after he made contact with Ira Kohlhaas but he is able to hang there currently inside the top three right behind him is the number 10 of Chase Berry in his pure ink Chevrolet and running fifth was your pole setter tonight here of Jordan Smith Dobbs halfway through this pit run before we uh, need some fuel but what does the tire situation look out there? <laughs> I'd say those tires are about ready to be changed. They're probably slick. Uh, that's when uh, you call up your good crew chief and spotter and start working your way up. Get a good pit stop here. Get four fresh fill goods on that bad boy and fill it up with some good Sunoco race fuel and get back out there. But uh, going in these pits could be treacherous for some drivers. That's, uh, that's going to be real key to watch also. Yeah, not a lot of these drivers making pit runs here on pr in practice, so going to have to see if they uh, at least have been practicing through the offseason. Here comes Evan Pienta to the inside with his 16 machine. He's going to look to the inside of Cole Haas in three. Will he be able to clear the 29? Oh, the 64 of Mullins into the hard outside wall. And I believe that he was trying to come down pit road after smoking the outside wall with that Canterbury machine. So two... Two of your Canterbury machines have been up into the outside wall. Maybe that team's trying something a little different than a lot of these other teams. And now John Mullins going to do the same thing that his teammate of Aaron Davidson did about five laps ago. So that is just suspicious. Maybe running a little more camber or toe into that tire. And maybe the tire just went away. 
And that car went into the outside wall. He is now going to battle to try and stay inside the top 20 here as he has fallen all the way back to the 16th position as Jar Stephen Holmes and Joshua Kane will be the next two drivers to the back bumper of that 64 of Mullins. Yeah, really stacked the field up right there. Here comes all of them now. See Michael Bromley working his way up through there. Yeah, Bromley was another one of those drivers that had hit the wall here early on. And uh, who is that? Is that Lee Staples? He is up the track. John Mullen's going to get trapped behind the 26 as he had lost all momentum in that 26. They're going to go three wide down the backstretch. Holmes in the middle. Staples to the outside. And it looks like uh, that 13 of Kane decided it was going to lift just a little bit. Now he's going to drive it hard down here into turn three to look to the inside of the motorcraft Ford. And they're going to go three wide again. Mullins to the outside. Bromley stuck in the middle. Now they're going to go four wide just about there as the 14 of Bryce went down to the apron. Bromley lifts off the throttle. He's going to lose a lot of spots as it's all about momentum as the 47 up against the outside wall there at Cannon. He's just trying to stay out of the way here. And he'll let everybody motor on by him. And the 14 of Bryce there. I, uh, that car is orange and he's making moves four wide. Uh, for all the millions out there who don't know, that orange is my favorite color. And, <laughs> that was a nice move right there. Yeah, orange is the color here for the Turn 3 Racing Network, too. Dobbs, don't forget that. But Steve Holmes last year had the least amount of incident points all season long in this Ford Mustang. The number nine right there, Motorcraft on the side of it for this season. That driver doing exactly what he did before last season. Just nice, clean races. Right now, he's been having just a solid top 20 run as he runs into the 14th spot. He's one of those drivers, Dobbs, that we're going to look for after pit cycles and on the long runs to come towards the front of the field as he runs 14th. Yeah, it's always nice to save your stuff. And, uh, we're almost halfway through this Caution, race. Caution, waving here. I think Jason Eisenhower in the Sim Speed Shop 36 machine has gone around as that whole rear end of the 36 machine is off there. What happened with the J Jason Eisenhower machine? Well, let's queue up the replay and see if we can throw it back as he was running right behind Robert Dudley in the 49 ALS machine in memory of Penny and Danny Valenzuela also right there. Oh, it looks like they all got stacked up. Dudley and Valenzuela make contact, and then Eisenhower going to go down and hit the inside wall. I believe everybody else uh, just drove off into the sunset, but that will be the first or the second caution flag here of the night. And uh, now, Dobbs, it'll be four fresh ones when they come down pit road. Yeah, and, and me as a driver, I always love going in the pit road under caution because I feel like that driver error gets to me taking these green flag stops and it just sometimes it just throws you off you know you just don't expect it and you're not used to hitting the brake and uh, these yellows really help during this time so as everybody comes down pit road here they come Wilson Massey Smith Barry Pienta Cole Haas LaFaro Jones Lopez and Lawrence your top 10 drivers as they all hit pit road It'd be once again four fresh tires, I would expect. Yeah. Yeah, I would definitely go forward here. Fill it up with gas, get the windshield clean, get a little something to drink. Looks like Dan Dill is going to do the Dan Dill thing here and roll right through Pitt Road, and he'll come out at the front of it. Brandon Massey looks to beat Justin Wilson off Pitt Road, so that will actually be the battle for the lead as Dan Dill will cycle back through here in about a lap and a half, and he'll come back down Pitt Road. So it'll be Brandon Massey, Justin Wilson, Chase Berry, Evan Pienta, Luke LaFaro, Ryan Jones, Roy Fernandez, Jeff Pogo, Loyal, or Doyle Lawrence, and Ira Kolhas, your top 10 here tonight in your season opener here at Michigan International Speedway. It's the Great Lakes Brewing 250. We're going to step away for just a quick second race, fans, and we'll be back here at Michigan to bring you more Sim Speed Shop Cup Series racing action. Simulated racing can be awesome, but it can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was always fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos or danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. 
stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all will be kept in the pits. Not to mention that with members in over 130 countries already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series and work your way up to one of seven world championships offering over half a million dollars in prize money. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. The most realistic online racing sim ever made. This is iRacing. Detailed laser scan tracks, fully dynamic, real world cars, and over 50 series to choose from. Six online world championships offering over $400,000 in annual prizes. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Welcome back here, race fans. It's the Sim Speed Shop USRA Cup Series. It's the Great Lakes Brewing 250 tonight here at Michigan International, presented by Jamie Leach. And it looks like we're going to get the one to go this time by. And it will be Brandon Massey, Justin Wilson, Evan Pienta, Luke LaFaro, Ryan Jones and his white claw hard seltzer machine. Then it's going to be the good wrench black number six of Roy Fernandez, Jeff Pogo, Loyal Dorrance, Ira Kolhas, and David Carmen. Your top 10 drivers here when we go back to Green Flag Racing. Well, we got to welcome everybody in here on the Turn 3 Racing Network. Thanks for tuning in tonight to watch this race here at Michigan. It's the season opener for these guys, and we hope you're enjoying yourself out there. If you're enjoying yourself, go ahead, hit that little thumbs up button. Let the drivers of the league know that you appreciate the good hard racing that we have seen here tonight as we close in on that halfway point. And if it's your first time tuning in on the Turn 3 Racing Network, hit that little red subscribe button, hit the bell, get the notifications anytime we go live here. This is Muth in the Booth tonight here with this series and I am live normally seven nights a week here on the Turn 3 Racing Network. If it's not me, it's K.R. Stolfus. If it's not him, it's David Whirl. If it's not those two, it's Chris and Rick bringing you all the action here on the Turn 3 Racing Network, and we appreciate everybody that tunes in to watch the great series we have here. And, well, we're about to go racing, Dobbs. That's, that's what I like to talk about. You know, we went to the concession stand, got us a nice hot dog, nice cold Coke. Now we're going to get back to racing here. As the iRacing pace car is diving down and away, it's going to be the old shed of Brandon Massey hitting the throttle, and there he goes. He's going to jump it just a little bit. There is no rule of when you have to go. You don't have to wait for the Geico restart zone. And what do you say, race fans, for the first time this season? Let's crank it up here at Michigan.
Wow, listen to the sounds of these 550 horsepower motors go here at the two mile, two mile Michigan International Speedway. And as we were doing the turn it up there, Dobbs, these drivers have single filed themselves out. You got to go back here just a little bit to just inside the top 10 where they are racing hard. It's Jeff Pogo, it's Jeff Price, Ira Cole Haas, and then here comes Wimby to the inside to make a three wide in turn number three. Yeah, these drivers are trying to get somewhere fast, three wide. They you know this race is kind of winding down a little bit more. It's, oh, the real, look at this down here on the apron, three wide. Yeah, that's the 13 there of Kane and the 78 there of Wimby. There comes Michael Bromley and his draft top machine to the outside. He'll go around these guys. Looks like Josh Kane lifting there to keep himself out of trouble, and he's just been getting split three wide left and right. Here comes Holly to the outside. Here comes Smith to the inside. It's the eye by power. Hulu 13, Joshua Kane going backwards right now. Yeah, he's going backwards, and Jeff Pogo is going frontwards. He started 29th up to 8th already. 24 cars looking pretty racy. Yeah, brand new colors this year for the driver of that 24 of Jeff Pogo. He's got... Uh, the Phoenix on that side of that machine tonight. He will carry that all season long here. But they are battling at the front of the field. Brandon Massey trying to stay in front of Evan Pienta. This 16 looks like it's going to be a strong candidate this year. And look who's right behind them. The young kid out of California. Doesn't even have a driver's license. Luke LaFaro is doing the battle there. They're starting to get real racy up here towards the top five also. And as they go into one, Pienta just took Massey for that second. Oh, he's going to actually get a little bit of a wiggle. And then Massey's going to chase that old shed machine up the track. Get that right rear damage to the car. Probably a little bit loose right now, I would imagine, with all this arrow. I have to see the handling. It came in on the long run, and this these two are still battling. With the uh, 7 of Lawrence right here and the 91 of Ryan Jones. As it looks like the 7 of uh, Lawrence will take that 6th position for the time being as Jones is falling back now into Jeff Pogo. And, well, I just think I just saw the 30 of David Carmen into the outside wall there, and I think it kind of checked up that outside lane. Jordan Smith back there with that group. Staples is right there, and here comes Winby down to the inside here once again. Eric Holly back here in this group. He saves big money at Menards. And, oh, I think he just made contact going into turn one here at Michigan. Oh, look at that. Close racing there by the 26 of Staples and the 25. Is somebody's going to get turned? Yeah. Caution flag going to fly here again. I'm not sure. Is that going to be Trenton in the 08 Taco Bell machine? He got turned here. So that'll bring out our third caution flag of the night. We just ran 12 laps, the shortest run we've had so far tonight. Let's uh, cue up the replay and go back and see what we can find. This is on the front straightaway as the incident happened on the backstretch coming out of turn number two. You see he's battling with the 54 there and the 19, the 19 of Carmen. And the 54, I believe, of Tyler Gunner. Gunner going to hit the outside wall and just, oh, nowhere for Trenton to go. And he gets hit hard from him, gets a body check, and then slams the inside wall, locks it up so he doesn't come back out on track. But that's just a tough break. Wrong place, wrong time. Let's see if we can go back here. I believe we have an onboard camera seeing exactly what the 08 saw here on the backstretch. Just no time to react at all for Trenton. Yeah, that was a very hard hit also. So that'll bring us to a slow here tonight. As it looks like everybody will look, be looking to come back down pit road here. 
as Wilson brings the whole crew along down pit road. And Brandon Massey's pit crew, they've been putting him out front. He comes in third. Let's see what happens here on this pit stop. Massey hits his box there, and it looks like a solid entry. A little slow for Luke LaFaro in the 20 machine, but he found his pit stall on the first try. Jordan Smith slides into his pit stall, and we will see who will win this battle off pit road. Now Wilson entered pit road first. Will he come out of pit road first? And it's a, a big smoky one coming out, and he's going to win the battle off pit road. It'll be Wilson Pienta. Roy Fernandez, Luke LaFaro, Ryan Jones, Loyal Dorrance, Jeff Pogo, Jeff Price. Uh, well, I recall Haas then, Michael Bromley, your top 10 drivers here. Just sitting outside the top 10, it's uh, Jordan Smith, Lee Staples. Joshua Kane, Charles Wimby, Andrew Beach, Brandon Massey going to be the big loser in that one. Dobbs, he's going to fall all the way back to the 16th spot. Eric Holly is 17th, Skip Carmen is 18th, Aaron Davidson is 19th, and Chase Berry is the 20th position. Yeah, I'm a little bit upset right now with Brandon Massey. You know, I mean, last pit stop was amazing. This one kind of fell off, but uh, he may be trying to repair a little bit of that damage on the race car 50 laps to go. So just, yeah, just over the halfway point. Good thinking, Dobbs. I was completely blinded by that, all the good racing we've been having here tonight. It's only going to be 50 laps to go. It's only 100 more miles of racing here in the season opener for the Great Lakes Brewing 250. Dobbs, I don't know if you've had ever had any of the beers that have been produced by the Great Lakes Brewing Company, but I can tell you that if you, don't, if you haven't had the chance, if you ever do, they are all phenomenal. <laughs> well, I mean... You got my address. You can ship me some through the mail or whatever. But uh, also, I know another great beer. It's uh, down towards the Gulf of Mexico called uh, 30A around the Destin area. It is amazing. Uh, try it. Next time you're on a nice little trip down there, it's a good beer also. Yeah, but you know what goes good with a good beer? Popcorn. No, not popcorn. I'm youth in the booth, Koozie. Come on now. <laughs> I was, uh, you know, I've been sitting here watching this race, and uh, I'm, I'm just Kind of wanting some popcorn. It's been a good race, and I forgot about those koozies. I got mine right here beside me with the cold Mountain Dew. Yeah, it looks like the 65 of Brandon Massey decided to sit on pit road for a little bit. Dobbs, he got that damage fix to the right side of that car, but he's going to lose a lot of positions. Yeah, he will, but uh, the way he's been racing, I don't think it'll take him long to get back up in the top, top five. He's a... Uh, very smart move right there, I think, uh, getting that damage fixed with less than 50 to go now because uh, every position is going to matter, and you want to have all the speed you can. We we'll have to keep an eye on Brandon Massey as he's going to restart back in the 15th position. Right now, it looks like a couple drivers have retired here in the season opener, and it looks like it's going to be... Brandon Hartwell, Jason Eisenhower, John Mullins, and Trent that you just saw go around in his Taco Bell machine. He will call it a night here at the Michigan International Speedway. Lights on the iRacing pace car do stay on, so we have at least another two laps under the caution flag circumstances. So just taking a quick gander down through the field, it looks like Cody Sleeper has been sitting down on pit road for quite a while, 50 laps to be exact. He is still in his car, but he is 50 laps behind. It looks like he's been down there for 42 minutes, so I think he's pretty close to getting a new motor dropped into the 01 machine. Uh, same with Dalton Kilrow. He is in the 41st position with his 41 machine. It's been... Actually, he is back out on to... Uh, looks like he's bringing that machine back out on track. So it's good to see the driver of the 41 coming back out onto the racing surface. Yeah, pick a couple more spots. Well, that car comes back out on track, Dobbs, but it doesn't sound very good. Maybe we can uh, exactly see what Dalton Kilrow is doing out there on track. Dalton, you got a copy. It's Muth up here in the booth. 10-4. Well, Dalton, you're back out on track here after 31 minutes, but this uh, Daddy-O's machine uh, doesn't sound too healthy yet. 
Well, I haven't got up to speed yet. I just just pulled out the pits. It's new new engine got put in here, so trying to trying to get it all figured out. Yes. Get it tuned up. It it sounds though like it probably belongs to like one of the Rick Ware or Rick Ware racing machines. A little bit down on power. Uh, probably. Uh, maybe if anything, this car needs to go in Dale Jr.'s graveyard because that was that was that was brutal. I love it. I love it. The car though has all four quarter panels back on it, so being now 39 laps down, there's a couple guys out there ahead of you that have already exited stage left here tonight, and still with 48 to go, you could still pick up a couple more positions. Yeah, that that's the uh, that's the plan. Um, I, I know I'm quick, and I obviously can't really pass anybody on track, so it's just about logging laps right now, points racing, trying to get what I can. Uh, I'm just coming in and get four fresh tires and uh, see what I can do. Yeah, it's going to be a long one here for Dalton Kilrow the rest of the way, but Dalton, good luck, and maybe uh, maybe next week, I guess. Yep. Well, short and sweet, Dobbs. Yep. <laughs> I like it. Well, it looks like Wilson will lead us back to green. It will be Pienta, then Roy Fernandez, Luke LaFaro, Ryan Jones, and then Doyle Lawrence. You know, we haven't talked enough about Doyle tonight. The driver of this RacingJobs.com machine, this number seven of Laurel Dorrance, also doing a lot of painting. Yeah, his car may look a little, little generic right now, but I can assure you some of these paint jobs in this race have been produced by Doyle Lawrence, and they are absolute phenomenal cars, and he has been doing exactly what he needs here in the first race of the season. He is fifth currently, or sixth currently. We'll keep an eye on Dor or Doyle to see where he winds up here tonight, but the iRacing pace car will be bringing the butt stang down pit road, and it'll be a Chevrolet and a Ford on the front row here. When will Wilson go? It's in his hands, and there he goes. He's going to fire off right at the tip of the Geico restart zone, and we are back to the green flag here. It'll be 47 more laps to go here at the Michigan International Speedway. He got a big jump on that race car. Yeah, he, has, he gets the big jump, though. These guys are going to be able to draft right back up to him, and a lot of single filing out already here with 47 to go here on this uh, restart. There's no single file at the front of this one. It looks like Wilson's going to block the inside lane, go back to the outside. Here comes Roy Fernandez to the inside. That number six, good wrench plus Chevrolet, has not led a lap here tonight. Will he be able to lead off of turn number four? Let's see when they get to the start-finish line. Oh, he He's going to make contact with Wilson. Wilson's going to spin the margarita machine to the inside, and all oh, chaos is going to break loose. Jeff Pogo is around in the 24 machine. Justin Wilson coming back out on track, so three cars involved in this, two separate incidences. It's going to start with your leader of Justin Wilson being turned off the nose of the six of Roy Fernandez. That will hand the lead over to Evan Pienta, but the racing is brought to a halt here. Well, that's huge right there. This little side draft has gone wrong. So as we queue up the turn three racing replay, this is a big one that has a lot of implications on this. We will have to really keep an eye out and watch. Let's go over top here out of turn number four. You're watching the Margarita. 58 just looks like the six going for the same real estate that the 58 is. And around is going to go Wilson. He's going to come down onto pit road. And then Jeff Pogo getting turned around in his Phoenix machine. We'll have to throw it back to see exactly where Jeff Pogo kind of fit into this battle. Well, let's see if we can find the 24 of Jeff Pogo. There's Jeff Pogo battling. It looks like Pogo goes down below. Oh, the contact from Smith to Price, and Pogo's the one that's going to hit the wall, and the 26 is also going to get involved in this. Lee Staples just in the wrong, absolute wrong place, wrong time. As that, uh... Step tire machine is pretty tore up also. That was definitely the big one here in Michigan. So a lot of drivers involved in this. We'll throw it back here once again and see if we can find the in-car camera with the 26 of Staples. The motor expired. That was heavy contact to the nose of that 26 machine, so it's a good possibility that it may have expired. So about five cars in this incident, and it's going to bring a lot of people maybe to the end of the night. Who's going to pit? It looks like the 16 
thinking about pitting. He is not. And then here comes Ivor Kohlhaas in the Kong Coolers. 29. He will be the first one down pit road. And it is going to be a lonely pit road for the driver of this 29. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm not going to say it's a bad bad decision, but it also might have been smart because uh, he will have the freshest tires, but still a long way to go. Um, wasn't a green, long green flag run, though, so we'll see. Yeah, I'm, take, I'm taking a peek. And, yes, Richard Hammond, we do see you out there in chat. Uh, he's uh, blowing up my phone right now, Dobbs. We're not giving him enough attention, I think it is. Oh, well, hey, let's give him a big shout-out right here. Well, Rick Hammond, uh... <laughs> yes, uh, beer bottles go great with the uh, Turn 3 koozie, the Muth in the Booth koozie, and yes, absolutely, we do still have some of those Turn 3 shirts available that you're talking about out there in chat. I believe we have, I think, three larges left currently five mediums and i believe maybe possibly i have to dig deep into the bottom of the box i believe we have two extra larges available i have to double check that race fans don't quote me exactly if anybody interested in any of the turn three merchandise go ahead and over uh contact us on the turn three racing facebook page or you can contact any of us at the turn three whether it's rick out there in chat now laughing at us uh, Chris Lagu, K.R. Stolfus, David Whirl, or myself, and we will all get you pointed in the right direction. Uh, we are very limited, though, I can tell you, on the Turn 3 racing stickers. Dobbs, I know you got yours, but we are limited right now, and especially with the pandemic going on here in the United States and, you know, the same thing with all around the world. Our supplier right now has been focusing on making masks for our healthcare workers, so we really respect them and everything they are doing, and we will hold off on our orders so they can help others in this time of need. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Roger, I'm not going to lie. I got your beautiful face on my Logitech G29 racing wheel here. And uh, ever since I put it on there, I, I think I've been winning more races on official. So what you're saying is uh, my face is about 15 to 20 extra horsepower plus 10% more downforce? I think so. Uh, there's a buddy of mine out there by the name of Tim Smith who's given me a lot of advice here in the last week. And it's worked well. And this sticker I put on has worked. So it's really improved as a driver. So, folks, once these stickers are uh, coming back, make sure you get a few of them. So it looks like we have 43 to go. It is still Roy Fernandez as he did not come down pit road. He will take the lead over. Then it's Evan Pienta, Luke LaFaro, Doyle Lawrence, Ryan Jones, Andrew Beach, Justin Kane, Eric Holly, Justin Wilson, who went for the ride through the grass. He's going to restart ninth, and I think he's going to be charging through the field. I'm, I'd am i watch out now for the Margarita Man in the 58. Yeah, he'll be like a man on a mission right here. He'd be interesting to watch him. He's had a fast car all night long. Working through traffic, though. I uh, watched some really good race car drivers run up front. And then once they get in the back, they kind of stall out uh, by the names of Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon through the years. So uh, let's see what happens here. Did you just compare Justin Wilson, an iRacer, to some Hall of Famers? Yes, I did. I mean, this guy's been up front. How many laps has he led? About 40? He's uh, been up front all night long. But, I mean, the, the clean air is everything. But once you get back in that dirty air, it really messes these cars. It's going to be interesting to watch, though. Yeah, it's 43 laps, but uh, I would have mainly uh, mainly referred to maybe to like Dale Earnhardt Jr. could win a couple races, but never finished it off at the end of a season for a championship. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't never. I don't know who he is. So uh, I just watched him here, and he's doing really well. Well, sometimes you got to poke the bear just a little bit. Justin Wilson is probably one of the most talented drivers we have seen on the iRacing platform. And you talked about another one of those drivers, Tim Smith. He is also uh, a pretty accomplished uh, sprint car driver on iRacing. And a couple starts, I believe. Uh, I think he has uh, one of those outlaw go-karts out there in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, part of the Casey Kane Sim Racing Team. But tonight, it's all about the Sim Speed Shop. Dot com Cup Series here for the USRA. It's the Great Lakes Brewing 250 presented by Jamie Leach. And uh, unfortunately, Jamie, if you're listening, we, we do miss you deeply here tonight as 
Unfortunately, uh, the server tonight went up. 43 slots filled in a matter of, I believe it was six minutes tonight to get into this main event. And he was not able to quick enough click the button, but here we are. We're going to see if this six good wrench machine is quick enough to keep the lead as he's going to fire off here. It'll be 41 laps to go this time by in the Great Lakes Brewing 250 tonight, presented by Jamie Leach and the Good Wrench Plus machine with such a huge start. I believe these guys are going to have a field day when they get to him because there is some damage on the nose of this Good Wrench Plus machine. We got two by two right here trying to get him through there. Yeah, here comes Luke LaFaro. He has not led anything. He started off the season last year from Daytona with a win as a last lap crash, and he just kind of darted and weaved and was able to pick up a win at Daytona. He is looking to see if he can win another season opener here with the USRA as he is looking to the inside here on Roy Fernandez. Evan Pienta to the outside, but it looks like that Toyota Camry down to the inside, the 20 of Luke LaFaro. He will get a huge shove from Doyle Lawrence to the inside. He will look to take the lead in turn number one for the first time. And here comes Eric Holly. He's down to the inside with his Volt. Save big money at Menard's machine. That Ford Mustang running currently in the sixth spot. And now look who's right behind him too. It's Andrew Beach. It is Andrew's first time here on a Tuesday with the USRA. He's bringing that nationwide 71 to the front. And well, Daz, we talked about it. Here comes Justin Wilson lurking in the background. Yeah, he's coming towards the front, but I'm impressed with that Luke LaFaro there. On the inside, made the move early. That's what I was talking about. He done the right thing. He did the right thing and taking a little bit look deeper into the field. I am noticing this driver here in the 81 machine of Dan Dill. He pitted under that last caution flag and I'm getting reports out from his spotter that they have gave him the green light. They are good to go on fuel. They are going for broke here. If we don't get any more cautions, Dan Dill will be good to go to the end of this one. Interesting. Also, who has enough fuel? Couple other drivers are on that same strategy. Jared Hagerdorn in his turn three racing network red machine back here. Hagerdorn in the 18th position. He is also good on fuel. He's on that same strategy. Along with Ira Cole Haas and Brandon Massey back here in the 22nd and 23rd spot. A lot of these drivers from about the 20th position on back, they all did pit last time under the caution flag. And they are good to go on fuel. It's going to be questionable if Luke LaFaro, Evan Pienta, Roy Fernandez, or Doyle Lawrence right now, or even Ryan Jones and Eric Holly, your top six drivers, if they have enough fuel to make it the rest of the way. This time by, it will be 37 laps to go here at the big two-mile track that they call Michigan International Speedway. Dobbs, I'm noticing this good wrench machine, the number six here of Fernandez, has started to uh, lose a little momentum on that car ever since the contact with the 58 of Wilson. And we went back green flag racing here. That six has been being freight trained by everybody to the outside. And the six is going to go down in turn three here. He's going to throw a little bit of a block on the Margarita 58. Remember, these two drivers had a little bit of conflict. Holly into the outside wall. That's going to be a chain reaction. A lot of them. Three, four of them involved here on the front stretch. It's going to wad a couple of them up. It looks like John Mullins is involved in this. Eric Holly. So that's going to slow the roll here with, 50, or with 36 laps to go. The Holly machine pulls away, but he has heavy, heavy damage on the eight. Let's see if we can get the producer to cue the replay and... See what they saw on that. Watching the eight of Holly as he works the outside in turn three to the inside. That was the Margaritaville 58 of Justin Wilson. Holly's going to go up the track here. Maybe the car gets a little push happy up the track. And John, or, uh, the 03 there of Davidson, nowhere to go. The 13 with nowhere to go. He gets wrapped up in that. Joshua Kane was having a really good race and just nowhere to go into the back of Holly. And that's what uh, is going to probably end the strong night here for Joshua Kane. See if we can go back on the nose here. Oh, that's already into the outside wall there for Kane. Throw it back a little bit farther. Right on top here of the 13 out of turn four. You see Holly up the track into the wall. 
And just nothing that Joshua Kane was going to do about that one. It was just too little too late for the driver of the 13 to even think about reacting with his I-Buy power machine. Jordan Smith going to go through the grass and a whole bunch of other drivers slowing up to try to avoid what was all happening in front of them. So now we talked about that fuel window for a lot of these drivers and if they were going to be able to make it on fuel dobs. I think now all that's out the window because everybody is down pit road. Except for it looks like three drivers going to stay out here. It's going to be Michael Bromley taking over the lead with Stephen Holmes and Miroslav Mach. They will all stay out here as they were good to make it the rest of the way. Now they will definitely be good, but maybe trying to save a little fuel in case we have overtime. Yeah, that caution came out probably about the right time for a lot of these drivers. Some unfortunate for others, but... Uh... Yeah, so that draft top 48 is out front. Taking a peek, looking to see where that machine is. Let, let's just, uh, let's play knock-knock with uh, Michael Bromley and see if he's at home. Knock-knock. Who's there? Draft top. Draft top who? Drink topless. Yeah, that's a wonderful bar tool, ain't it? Go yeah, balls. I, I, really, I really enjoy <laughs> my draft top, uh, Bromley. It, you know, it's a real neat invention, and it's, Good to see them on the car here with you this year in USRA. Yeah, definitely. Uh, always, always happy to uh, carry on a, a sponsor in Draft Top is one heck of one. They uh, I reached out to them, talked to them about iRacing. They really love the idea of it. They said their product goes perfect with racing, and I couldn't agree more. So got them, and I got the uh, Back Bay Brewing Company farmhouse uh, location on the car also this year. So what a, what a good combination. You know, a craft brewery and a bar tool designed around drinking craft brews out of a can. Well, that is quite an interesting tool. So it's good to have, one, a sponsorship that has beer, and another one that is a beer tool that you can drink topless with. So that's interesting. But, hey, enough with the sponsor plug, man. Tell me about this race that's going on out there. You're leading this thing with, well, 34 to go. Yeah, uh, everybody went down pit road, and I got enough fuel to make it. So I'm not going down pit road. It's not like we ran enough laps there. Uh, so gonna gonna play the tire conservation game here and hope that these guys on fresh tires do what fresh tire guys do and run hard and make mistakes. Huh. How you like that one, Do Dobsy? You up there? I hear you with the go balls. <laughs> that was pretty good. I like it. I like the confidence. Awesome. Hey, you guys keep doing a killer job up there. Uh, we're about to get one to go right here. So uh, i got to start to decide what I want to do. Well, there you heard it from the driver out of the Bohica Esports Group. It's Michael Bromley, the driver of the 48 draft top car. Is, we're going to get one to go this time by. As uh, If you hear my dog in the background, race fans, I'm sorry. She's got the zoomies right now. Yeah, we talked about Michael Bromley, Roger. He painted me a Lamar Jackson Baltimore Ravens Xfinity car, and she looks sharp. Uh, first time out. Got took out by some redneck hillbilly, and uh, we'll not talk about that, but that car looks awesome. Yeah, so it looks like it's going to be the 48 of Michael Bromley, Stephen Holmes to the outside of him. Then it'll be Luke LaFaro and Evan Pienta. Evan Pienta and Luke LaFaro all have four tires. Bromley and Holmes going to roll the dice here and see if they can keep themselves at the front of the field with those old tires. It'll be 32 laps to go here when we get the green flag. Yeah, the give and take is probably about to go out the window. Yeah, give and take. Dobbs, when it comes down to it, you as a driver know that mentality that, you know, when you would have lifted when you had a run or you were three wide, all that's going to go out the window here. And we're going to see which driver is going to be able to handle themselves the best the, the rest of the way. Yeah, it gets real intense, especially when you're packed up like this, uh, White knuckles, you start to sweat. <laughs> Sometimes bad things happen, but you hope for the best and just go forward. Yeah, Eric Holly, who was involved in that last incident, has his nose cone ripped off that eight machine. He will restart in the 19th position as the iRacing pace car looks to make the left-hand turn here in just a second off of turn number three, or turn number four. Yeah, sorry. Uh, iRacing pace car down and away in the hands of Michael Bromley. There goes Bromley. He's going to hit the gas and leave the field, sit in the dust. 
the 20 car though. He's on the inside. He makes moves earlier. So Steve Holmes and Luke LaFaro will do the dance side by side through one. Coming out of turn number two. Look for that 20 to try to accelerate. Where is Evan Pienta going to go? Is he going to split the hole as Luke LaFaro goes low? Evan Pienta is going to go to the middle. Stephen Holmes will be to the outside. They are three wide down the backstretch. It's going to be Pienta coming through the middle. Now it's going to put Wilson in the middle with the 20 out down on the bottom. Holmes had to lift a little bit. They will make it all work out of turn number four as Michael Bromley going to come down and try and draft Evan Pienta, but the <laughs> just so tongue-tied right now. Dodds, it's Wilson to the inside. He got shot out of a cannon. Contact between the 91 there of Jones and the 9 of Holmes. It's going to send Holmes up the track. He is going to lose a bunch of positions now. Here comes Lawrence there in the 7 machine. He's looking to the inside of Holmes now to take over that 6 position. Justin Wilson, he wants to get to the front and be gone. Yeah, he was at the front all night until he was taken out on the front straightaway, and now he has worked his way back up into the second spot. I'm pretty impressed, though, right now as we're finishing our second lap back to green, and Michael Bromley has been able to hold his 48 draft top machine right there in the third position on those old tires. He'll go down there. He was going to go to the bottom, and last second, Chad Canals, his spotter, was yelling, car low, Luke LaFaro's down low. Bromley going to have to ride the high line where he didn't want to be, but it actually is going to work because Luke LaFaro saw a little bit of a wiggle out of that 48, and now he will lose the position. Ryan Jones now will look in turn three to see if he can take away the third spot. Yeah, not a not a bad move by Bromley. I mean, if a caution comes out, you got a guy that's going to take tires, but he's starting to drop a little bit here. Yeah, look at the gaggle back here. It's Chase Berry, Roy Fernandez, uh, Stephen Holmes. I believe that's uh, Charles Winby also right there at the McDonald's machine. They are all, this is just a gaggle of cars. Dan Dill is also in this group right here in the 81. Andrew Beach, Cole Day in his tore up car. Remember, Day in his Bass Pro Shop machine, he was tore up in that incident there in the uh, beginning of the race, I believe on lap number 12 or something like that. Or maybe it was 21, maybe I'm dyslexic a little bit. But he is now back up into the 13th spot currently. Yeah, I've been watching him a little bit work his way up through there. I figured Cole would be work his way up through there pretty good. He had a lot of damage, but uh, he's closing in a little bit here. Oh, contact between the 22 of Hagerdor and the 30, I believe. A Carmen. Carmen's going to go down onto the apron, but he saves that UPS machine. He'll lose about four spots, but it looks like he'll be all right. He's running in the 20th position. Larry Poling in the 69 machine right there. The uh, Army Green machine, he'll work around the 30 of Carmen. And now he'll take over the 20th spot with his U.S. Army machine. Evan Pienta still able to hold off the strong charging 58 here of Justin Wilson with 27 laps to go. Bromley now falling a little bit farther back into the field. He is currently sitting in the fifth spot. And now it looks like here comes uh, Lawrence. He will make the move to the bottom in the seven. He will take over the fifth position currently. Winby will now be the next challenger for Michael Bromley, but I believe somebody is going around towards the back. It's the 17 of Gene Wolf in that Wolf's Chevrolet, and that will bring us to the caution flag. Brandon Massey also involved in the old shed machine. So we're going to take a caution flag here with 26 laps to go. Two of them that we can tell currently involved in this wreck. Let's take it back on this turn three racing replay and see if we can find it there. We already see Massey down into the grass a little bit farther back. They were battling just behind Jared Hagedorn and Cole Day who were running 13th and 14th at the time of this incident. Oh, it looks like maybe Wolf comes down just a tad and Massey was sitting there. Massey's just going to go down there and not hit the wall. It looks like Wolf's just going to spin around. We're going to have to throw it back and check it out again. Possibly see... Uh, See if we can go over top here. Watching the red and the black and orange car to your screen there. See if Wolf comes down or Massey comes up or what actually happens here. Oh, it looks like Massey tried to side draft the 17 and then unfortunately both of them make contact. But yeah, the caution is going to come out. It's going to save both of them because they don't have damage on either of those cars here. 
And everybody's headed down pit road, Dobbs. Is it four tires or two tires here with 26 to go? I'm going to go with four. I think four is just the way to go here at Michigan. Tires fall off pretty fast. And uh, pretty smart decision by Bromley, though, staying out right there. Got that track position. Well, we'll see if it plays off. Plays off for the driver of the 40. Or no, 48. He, Brom, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about now. I'm like, he didn't stay out. I see him on pit road. I get yeah. what you're talking about, Dobbs. I'm picking up what you're putting down as they're picking up the right side. A two-tire stop by the 10 of Chase Berry. That's going to get him out in front of the field. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be Larry McReynolds here eating ice cream. Uh, I'm taking four fresh ones and filling up with gas because I think four tires is the way to go. I could be wrong, though. We'll see. Right now, it looks like one driver going to stay out. It looks like it uh, shows it's the 21 of Miroslav Mach on screen for you, race fans. It'll be the number 11 FedEx Toyota Camry. Chase Berry, though, will lead the race off pit road. He took two tires. It's right side tires, and it's Evan Pienta in the third position. He took four tires. Justin Wilson, Ryan Jones, Luke LaFaro all took four, and then Cole Day comes out taking two tires with his Bass Pro Shop machine. He runs seventh. Eighth is is uh, Lawrence, then it's Winby, and then Bromley. Everybody taking four tires throughout the rest of the field. So cautions breeding, cautions here, Dobbs, and I don't think that's going to be the last one we see here tonight from the Michigan International Raceway. No, I don't think so either. Uh, gets real intense as the last wind down. We'll see what happens. It, maybe we'll not see the last of the cautions. They may run it out, but uh, I know drivers get a little antsy during these times. Yeah, you talk about antsy. Let's talk to the man who is running currently in second in his Pure Ink number 10. Chase Berry, I know you got a copy. Yeah, I do. I got a copy. C can you tell me who's interviewing you? Uh, Roger. All right, at least we, we start off things good this time around. Chase, a two-tire stop. What is going through your mind right now with, I believe, we're at 21 laps when we go back to Green Flag Racing? Um, Nothing really. I mean, it was only like a four- or five-lap run, so I just took less. Um, the right, the left sides have been wearing out more and more than the rights, surprising enough. And I did I, – I messed myself up earlier with the pit stops. I sped on pit road and got to the back and tried it out before in the same situation. And it, and it jumped me up, and I didn't fall off nearly as much as it before. So we tried it again, and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, we're going to see what you're going to do. You got the uh, 21 of Miroslav Mach playing the strategy also on no tires. Do you think you're going to be able to get around him on this restart pretty easy, or are you going to take take it a little uh, take it a little easy yourself? That, uh, I don't know. It all depends. Uh, if he you know gets a good jump, that's one thing. Um, that's cool. Uh, 16's been pretty good all day. And, of course, you know you got the GOAT behind me, which, you know, I'm pretty sure we'll work together, try to figure out something to get around both these guys. Uh, the GOAT. I, I, who are you referring to? I'm not sure. Oh, I'm on bad. I was looking at my rearview mirror. Yeah, I, I thought you were talking about me for a second, but, uh, nah, you No, know, hey, I was talking about Justin Wilson. Uh, oh, okay. I, I, Dobbs, I thought he was talking about me. Yeah, it sounds I, about right. I thought You're it was the Tom goat. Brady. Hey, Tom Brady, were too. I don't care. <laughs> Well, let's see. Are we going to get the one to go here? We are. So, Chase Berry, good luck here with those two tires. And uh, do us proud with that beautiful paint scheme out there by Pure Ink. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. There you heard it from the driver out of the payday. Racing stables, Chase Berry taking two left side tires here. And it will be a shootout. It will actually be 22 laps to go when we go back to Green Flag Racing. It'll be Miroslav Mach leading us to Green Flag with the 2120 FedEx machine. And then it'll be the 10 of Chase Berry. The 16 of Evan Pienta and Justin Wilson in that 58 machine behind them. Then it's the White Claw driver of Ryan Jones. Luke LaFaro in the 20. Cole Day in the 99. Doyle Lawrence in the 7. And then I believe that's going to be the 78 of Charles Wimby. Michael Bromley rounding out the top 10 here. And Dobbs, pull those belts tight for me one last time because I want you to be into this seat because these boys are going to put on one heck of a show. Yeah, we might see, uh, might see a big crash here in a few laps. Huh? It's going to get real intense on this start. Got guys with two tires, got time, guys with four tires. And you got the GOAT right there, Justin Wilson in fourth. It's going to be interesting. You know, I really swore when he said GOAT he was talking about me, but there I go again thinking, and, you know, we know how that sometimes hurts myself. 
You know, maybe my feelings were hurt there by Chase Berry, but let's see if Berry can pull this off when the iRacing pace car makes the left-hand turn. It is off the track. When will Miroslav Mach hit the gas? And there it is. And actually, it looked like the 10 of uh, Berry kind of got jacked up there by Justin Wilson, but it looks like everybody has got it away. Oh, no. I spoke too soon, Dobbs. There, there's a uh, parking lot on the front stretch. Uh, Dale Jr., please report to Michigan International Speedway with a semi-truck because we got tour-up cars all over the front straightaway here. It's going to take a while to dissect this one here, Dobbs. A lot of cars on the front stretch tour up, up and over. It, it's just they are everywhere here. So we're just like going to have to zoom out and see what we can see. It all started with a checkup, I think, right around... Uh, Jared Haggard, or, and I think I saw the whole field start to check. That bottom lane wasn't really formed up, and then they all went, and then they all checked. Oh, Jeff Price into the back there of somebody, and it looks like Bechtel going to get turned around. Massey's turned around, polling. Danny Valenzuela is involved in that, and somebody is on the roof back there. Jeff Pogo is stopped in his 24 machine. Jeff Price is right there. The 47 of Tommy Cannon is also involved in this. The 88 of Justin Winters is right there. We're going to have to throw it back again and and find what happened here. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit closer here on the 88 of Justin Winters. I think it all started right around his machine as Jeff Price was into the back of him. And then it was on, you might as well just say it was on like Donkey Kong at that point. And that was a nasty crash. And there you see the incident to the outside and a couple of drivers. Not sure who was the one on the roof there. I'm not getting an exact. That's Tyler Gunner in the 54. He was on his roof. The 03 of Davison was also involved in that wreck. So this one's going to take a bunch of them out on this. Let's see if we can go back. Let's see if we can ride through the cockpit view here of the 14 of Jeff Price. Be able to see exactly what Jeff Price was dealing with. There you see everybody go, and then all of a sudden, like, he was flat to the floor, and there was nothing he was going to do, because as soon as he made contact with that 88, he was getting ran over from everybody from behind because they all thought it was go time. So throttle checking games being played here with just about 20 laps to go. Going to put us under that caution flag once again. So this is actually going to help Miroslav Bach, who stayed out there, because now he will continue to be the race leader. And the more laps that click off under yellow, the better for him in those used tires. Yeah, that's, what I was, that's always nice as a driver when you got more yellows than green flag laps. And especially here, because when you're out front, you can really just get going with that clean air. Well, as we uh, pace here under yellow, we're going to step away, race fans. We're going to wet the old whistle, pay a couple bills, and we'll be back here to finish things off in the Great Lakes Brewing 250 tonight, presented by Jamie Leach in your Sim Speed Shop USRA Cup Series.
Jason Hamilton. I'm director of racing operations and event management for NASCAR. I'm also the series director for the eNASCAR Peak Antifree Series on iRacing and the eNASCAR Ignite Series on iRacing. We're here at Myrtle Beach Speedway for a test session for Zach and Max, the two champions from the eNASCAR Peak Series and the eNASCAR Ignite Series. They're testing late models in partnership with Rev Racing. Uh, opportunity for them to uh, come out and showcase the skills that they built on iRacing in a full-size stock car for the first time. Got in the car, got the wheel adjusted. Zach's in the car now. Get that set up for him and uh, we uh, ready to roll here in a little bit. The tips we got were basically just to try and keep it on the bottom as best as possible. And that's gonna be the, the easiest way to keep the car in one piece and um, just not make any mistakes. You're off the throttle for a long time. You're off the throttle longer than you actually think you need to be. But the corners are so long, if you try to pick the throttle up too fast, it's just gonna either jerk the car loose or make it tight and then jerk loose. Any other questions? Nope. We'll try it and if we if you have any trouble, need to need to talk about something, it's fine to stop. Always come off the racetrack like we did, you know, a while ago. Yep. Okay. Was crazy I, I wanted to open it up a little bit more but it, it was all about just keeping the car in one piece being safe I have no complaints on that so just now that you're out you can relax and think yeah. about what you did and then we'll apply to the next yeah. round okay yeah you, you did very well yeah good job. You make me nervous but you didn't <laughs> okay. you didn't make me nervous this time yeah so that was good Okay. Yeah. You do the height now? Yeah. All right. That's good. What about your gears? You know where they're at? First, second, third, fourth? Okay. Welcome back here to the Michigan International Speedway. As we're getting ready to go racing, it'll be 17 laps to go. It'll be Miroslav Bach, Chase Barry on the front row. Dobbs, here we go. The pace car is down and away. It's going to be good racing here. Put 16 laps on the board, and let's go racing at Michigan. Another good start by Miroslav Mach, but it looks like there's a huge gap between a lot of these cars. They're going to get a lot of good runs. 16 laps to go in the Great Lakes Brewing 250. And boy, look at those fresh tires go right to the outside of Mach and just set sail. Boy, he's gone. Yeah, I mean, that Chase Berry car getting pushed by Wilson right now, you're not going to be able to compete with that. Evan Pienta, though, says, I can go to the inside. I got four fresh goodies. Down to the inside goes the 16 of Evan Pienta. Can he make the pass, though, is going to be the question. Ryan Jones is sitting there in the 91 hard seltzer machine, and Luke LaFaro's back there. Doyle Lawrence also sitting right there in the sixth position. Bromley is up to the seventh spot as they got around the 21 of Bach. So Bromley is seventh, Wimby is eighth, Cold Day is ninth, and Dan Dill, who uh, was, what, 20 seconds, 25 seconds behind when that first yellow came out tonight, has rebounded inside of the top 10 as he gets around Cold Day. Day will fall back to that position, but the lead is still charging, and it's still the 10 of Barry leading the way out of turn number four, but here comes Pienta this time. Everybody is lined up on the outside. Nobody is wanting to go down to the bottom. Chase Berry is going to get a huge push down the front stretch here from that margarita, 58. Yeah, oh, that inside line looks like it's working good, but that outside line just has the momentum. It's going to be huge. Yeah, it looked like for a moment Jones was going to go down to the bottom groove there and try and help out the 16 of Evan Pienta, but he was not able to help him in the aspects of 
pushing him, so he went right back up there, tucked third in line on the outside as they are working upon a lap down car. I believe that's the 14 of Jeff Price, I think, anyway. There I go thinking again. See what happens when the leaders catch this lap down car. It's courtesy there. Just get over, let him go. He gets down on the apron as everybody gets around him, and now I believe they're going to work up onto the 17 here of Gene Wolf, who is down one lap currently pending as they're almost three wide. Here comes Evan Pienta back to the inside. Wilson's going to slam the door. Chase Berry's going to hold the high line. They're going to have to work around this lap car. Dangerous working as they're going to go three wide around Gene Wolf down to the inside. Justin Wilson with 12 laps to go will take back over the race lead, and it's going to be hard to for any of these guys now to work their way back around Justin Wilson, who will lead them back into turn one. Evan Pienta, though, has been showing how hard. Oh, he's going to get loose, and up the track he goes. That's going to push the 10 of Chase Berry into the outside. Oh. Wallen, that's going to collect a couple of them, and a couple more are going to get collected down here in turn number one. The, oh, big carnage. Yeah, the 9 of Holmes is involved. The 13 is also involved here. The 03 of Davison is involved. Uh, the 41 of Dalton Kilrow going to come to a complete stop. But the 10 of Chase Berry is where it all started. He made contact with that 16 of Evan Pienta. Let's watch this and see what happens here to Chase Berry. Down into one here, coming, I believe that was uh, 12 to go at that point. The 16 goes in, gets tight. Oh, and then net code between the 10 of Chase Berry, and Berry slams the outside wall. Holmes hits him, and everybody else comes piling in. Looks like a lot of, uh, maybe a couple guys were hammered down here at the end of this one, piling into that wreck. And that's going to collect more cars than what uh, they wanted to really get involved in here tonight. So I guess those two tires here at Michigan for uh, Chase Berry, Dobbs, uh, just not going to play out or pay off. No, uh, that was a that was a terrible thing to happen to him, though. I mean, he tried, tried it, but just man got loose, hit that wall hard. Yeah, what is everybody going to do here? Wilson kind of semi-heartedly faked to go down pit road. Dan Dale faked a little bit harder. It looks like Andrew Beach will be the first one to actually bring down his machine to pit road. Who is he going to bring with him? It looks like uh, the 49 of Robert Dudley and his ALS machine will come down. The 13 of Kane will come down. Uh, Wine Set will bring his 98 machine down pit road also. So a couple guys will come down and and take a little bit of service here. Look at 91 of Ryan Jones. Started 20th up to third. That's a big pickup here. You think he's drinking a White Claw? I He may be. Well, give me a second, and I think we may just go ahead and ask him as I actually don't see the driver of the 91 out there. Otherwise, we would uh, see if he was drinking a White Claw here tonight. There's nothing more I love, Roger, than TV time with you. I know. I would have thought he would have been here. He could have talked to Muth in the booth and, and the Dobbs Nation out of uh, Vols Nation down there in Tennessee. But right now, he is not here to get a word in. And we don't really want to go interview Chase Berry. We've already been there tonight with 10 laps to go here. Uh, Chase uh, probably not too happy with himself here. What do you say? Uh, maybe we can get a word in with one of these other drivers who is a little bit newer in the series. Let's see if we can talk to the driver of the 13 of Joshua Kane. Josh, you got a copy? It's Muth up here in the booth. Up 10 4, I got a copy. Well, as you bring that eye by power Hulu machine back out on track, uh, what was your point of view there for that wreck coming out of turn number four? Or down the uh, backstretch, actually. Down the it just kind of came off a of four, and they were all yelling wrecking, but by that time, it was just too late. That's nothing I could have done. Yeah, so the nose of this, uh, I believe it's a Camaro. Yeah, it is a Camaro. <laughs> it's all sorts of tore up here tonight. You had a good run going. Uh, are you going to be able to salvage anything out of this with uh, this short little run at the end? Uh, we're going to do our best. I just, you know, made it for the sponsors on the car. The actual sponsor on the car is supposed to be Star Symphony. She does amazing homemade stuff, and uh, it just... 
just kind of stinks that, uh, you know, I couldn't, you know, bring her a better finish, especially since I was in or around the top 10, you know, most of the day when I could get up there. Yeah, it's been a rough one, but you got to really think out of 43 drivers here tonight that entered into the Michigan International Speedway, you had yourself as a rookie, a really good run going. So it's really you can't hang your head at that because there's a lot of strong competition out there with the uh, USRA Sim Speed Shop Series. Oh, yeah, no, 100 percent. I mean, these, this is definitely one of the you know, the better leagues that I've been in for sure so far. The driving is so much better. You know, it's just uh, just kind of think that when I had that, you know, that good of a car, just, you know, Kind of like in real racing, it's just nothing I could have done. Nothing he could have done. Well, Josh, good luck the rest of the way, and we hope to see you out there in a couple of weeks contending once again for a win here in the Sim Speed Shop USRA Cup Series. All right, 10-4. You guys have a good rest of the broadcast. Well, there you heard it from the driver of the 13 of Joshua Kane. A uh, little, little bit... Uh, bittersweet i guess you know he has no he's he knew he had a strong car and a chance to possibly pull off a a strong finish but now he's going to be buried way back into the field right now he is in the 22nd position you know something roger he was real positive there with that talk and uh that's always plus as a driver you always know you come back next week just try it again So the iRacing pace car lights will go out, which means we will go back to green flag racing here in just a little bit. It'll be seven laps to go in the Sim Speed Shop USRA Cup Series tonight. Presented by Jamie Leach and the Great Lakes Brewing Company. So we got to give a big shout out not only to the Sim Speed Shop guys for everything they're doing here. I believe a prize package to the champion at the end of the year. But also, uh, I think I have a package coming myself of some of the Sim Speed Shop pa or products, so I can uh, give you a little more information on. I think I got one of those coming. You know, with the uh, UPS uh, service being a little bit slower right now, possibly uh, being a little slowed down. Let's let's put it that way. But right now, these drivers are not going to be slowed for much longer. Dobbs, it's going to be Wilson and Pienta, and they've been up si up inside the top. Five all night long other than when Wilson had to come from eighth yeah they've been up there all front up front all night long I'm gonna pop a top on this orange citrus rally energy drink because this is going to be interesting oh like you need some energy to watch what these boys are about to put on the energy is going to come when the iRacing pace car hits pit road and we go back to the green flag racing iRacing pace car does make that left hand turn now and Justin Wilson Evan Pienta there goes Wilson. Green flag is back in the air here tonight at Michigan. And Wilson's going to get about a four-car length jump over Evan Pienta. He's going to... Wilson's going to leave Pienta. Battle with Jones and LaFaro. Oh, Bromley was in the fifth position. And I think he just tapped the wall going into turn one. That draft top machine right front. Fender has the crinkle. It's had a crinkle all night. But I think he got a little more of a ding on it now. And look at Daniel Dill. He's going to come to the inside here on the 48 of Bromley and look to take over six. He will take over six by the time they get to turn number three. But here comes Ryan Jones down to the inside of Evan Pienza. This time by six laps to go here at Michigan. Going to be real interesting at inside line if they can get hooked up. Trying to make a slide job. So now Ryan Jones is going to go to the inside. And he's got Doyle Lawrence down there. Will those two be able to dance in tango with the with those two tangoing on the outside? It's Wilson that will lead once again off turn number two. And he's going to go down there. He's going to pull uh, Jones back up here for a little bit. Then he's going to go right back to the outside and bring Evan Pienta back. Contact between the 20 and the 7 there. The 20 of Luke LaFaro and Lawrence going to make a little contact. Here comes Dan Dill down to the inside. He's going to make it three wide out of turn number four. Five fingers going to be in the air this time by at the start finish line. Five more laps to go here at Michigan. Ten more miles of racing as they go three wide down into turn number one. Dill going to roll the bottom. Lawrence being stuck in the middle. And LaFaro is going to run the high line here. Lawrence going to clear the 20 out of turn number two. I don't know how they made that work, but they did. Yeah, excellent driving by everybody as now the racing at the front has started to, uh, I'm going to say calm down, but we know better than that. It'll be four laps to go this time by. It will be Wilson, Pienta, Lawrence, Jones, and LaFaro side by side for that fourth position. Dan Dill has a quick bomb in oil, number 81 car, and he would like to get to the front 
He won last time we came to the Michigan International Raceway. He won this race a year ago. Can he pull off this win here tonight? I think he got to jump out of line and do, pull the slide job on that inside lane to pass a car, but here three come, wide. Yeah, here three wide. Here comes Roy Fernandez once again to the inside. Bromley going to stuff the middle with his drop top, draft top machine, and he will look to the inside here. Oh, somebody blinking out. I believe that's Wimbish was blinking out that time in his McDonald's 78 machine. Three laps to go here at Michigan, and Wilson gonna lead another one. He's gonna go down to the bottom. Evan Pienta gonna ride the high line. He's gonna diamond it off. Pienta's gonna have one heck of a run here. Wilson's gonna have to block him coming down the straightaway. If he wants to continue to lead this race, Pienta thought for the moment he looked to the inside. Wilson's gonna block him down the backstretch. Here comes Evan Pienta to the inside, right to the back bumper in turn three. Heavy racing up there between Wilson and Pienta. This time by at the line, it'll be the popsicle sticks in the air for Justin Wilson, Evan Pienta, and the rookie of Doyle Lawrence, Luke LaFaro, lurking in the background to see where he's going to be able to. Evan Pienta will nose ahead down into the corner. He's going to lose the handle on the car. He's going to push the 58 of Wilson up the track a little bit. He will take over the lead as they exit turn number two, but that Wilson, Margarita, 58, is not going to be denied. He will go heads up back into turn number three. This time out of turn number four, they will see the white flag in the air. Will we get the white flag and the regulation as these boys are racing hard to see who can win the opening race here tonight for the Great Lakes Brewing 250? White flag in the air. We will finish this one in regulation tonight. It's Wilson to the outside. Pienta still to the inside. Doyle Lawrence thinking about where he wants to go as Luke LaFaro is going to go join the high line. Right now, as they work down the backstretch, it is the 58. As it looked like Evan Pienta trying to side draft down the backstretch. They will go side by side. Wilson and him right there couldn't fit a paper through the gap between those two cars. It's going to be Pienta down to the inside. He's going to make contact with Justin Wilson. He is going to win the Whoa. race. Evan Pienta pushes Justin Wilson up the track, and Pienta will win his first ever race with the USRA Sim Speed Shop Cup Series here tonight at Michigan. Doyle Lawrence is going to finish second in his debut and then Justin Wilson will finish third after leading the most laps. Luke LaFaro will finish in the fourth position. Dan Dill will finish fifth. Ryan Jones is sixth. Michael Bromley comes across the line in his draft top machine in seventh. And then Charles Wimby will finish eighth. Roy Fernandez in ninth. And Jared Hagerdorn will round out the top ten here in the season opener. Very good racing right there. Yeah, it looks like Evan Pienta is going to burn him down here on the front stretch. And as he celebrates, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to step away to try and get to your Sim Speed Shop post-race show here for your Great Lakes Brewing 250. Welcome back here, race fans, to the Michigan International Speedway. It was the Great Lakes Brewing 250 tonight, presented by Jamie Leach in your USRA Sim Speed Shop Cup Series. And Evan Pienta, I've caught up with him in victory lane here. Evan, you are going to win your first ever race here on a Tuesday night with this series. It's got to feel pretty good to start off the season in victory lane. Oh, yeah, boy. It, uh, it definitely does. Um, just... Uh... I mean, I've this is my first cup race here in the cup series, and uh, I joined this league 
probably last year and i just really enjoy this it's a uh, it's just a really uh, fun group of guys to race with but um no we uh michigan's my home track so i really wanted to do good here um with this michigan sponsor on board uh didn't expect to qualify up to second um and uh just ran up there just thought i was really honestly just a top 15 car but uh guess i just ran better than that yeah, obviously you ran better than that, parking her in victory lane. Tell us about those closing laps, though. Justin Wilson to your outside. He had led the most laps at that point and probably had the most dominating car, maybe besides yourself. How were you able to, you know, get side by side with him there in those final laps and hold that bottom groove? Well, I uh, I actually I didn't want to go down there as soon as I did, but um, my car I had like. I was about to blow up with uh, oil temps high, so I uh, went down low to try and get cool. And I thought the whole race, I thought you were on the inside, you were going to get freight trained. But um, I just tried to manage the throttle as much as possible, keep it side by side with him. And uh, into three and four on that final lap, I uh, dove it in a little bit deep, uh, just enough to make it stick. Uh, and then I think there was, I barely got into uh, Justin there, but. Um, I mean, I did not think this was possible at all, uh, not even an hour ago, an hour or two ago. So just really excited and really happy for this. Yeah, well, congratulations once again because, son or sir or whatever you would like to be called here tonight, Evan, you are the winner of the Great Lakes Brewing 250. Who do you got to thank for parking this 16 tonight here in Victory Lane? Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my... Uh, my dad and my uh, uncle, they uh, they were uh, texting me through the race, giving me motivation, and, uh, giving me like idea, uh, strategy and whatnot, and just kept my mind focused on the race and not thinking about anything else. So uh, I'd like to thank them. Well, there you heard it from your winner tonight. Evan Pienta will win the season opener here for the Great Lakes Brewing 250. Congratulations to him and that whole crew. Our uh, next up to interview would be the driver of the seven of Doyle Lawrence. Unfortunately, we don't have Doyle available to talk about. The rookie of the rookie here with the Sim Speed Shop Series, Doyle will finish in the second spot. We do have our third place finisher here tonight, though, of Justin Wilson and Dobbs. I think you've caught up with him here on the front stretch. Yeah, I did. I uh, got Justin Wilson down here with me in this Margarita car, Margaritaville car, actually. We've been calling it wrong all race long, but uh, Justin. Led the most laps, just door banging there, last lap. Tim, how you feel, bud? Oh, no, I can't complain about the finish. Uh, we had a pretty dominant car. Um, definitely, I'm still iffy, and I don't really care much for the aero package that they give us with these cars, but you got to make do what you got to do if you're going to race. Um, all in all, man, that was a great race, especially up front. We had a lot of close battles and stuff, and that race to the line with Evan was pretty good. I, as soon as we made contact, man, my car just, like, died, uh, that momentum I had. So um, it was uh, good to see him run the bottom like that because I've been doing it most of the night. Um, so it was kind of nice to see somebody else do what I was doing. Yeah, I thought you almost had it the way you are kind of sweeping down towards the bottom of the corners last couple of laps in the race. Uh, but uh, talking about these aero package it's just like you can't, once you get stuck in traffic, you can't really pass in and kind of make it frustrating for you as a driver. Oh, yeah, and then a little bit of uh, damage hurts, too. Like, you know, me getting turned on the front straightaway uh, put quite a bit of damage on my car. So I was just surprised it was still up to, to par like it was. We made it back through the field. Um, all in all, like I said, I can't complain. I, I'm, I'm satisfied with the top three, man. That's pretty cool. Uh, I got, we were interviewing the driver earlier, and he said you were the GOAT. And uh, I just... I think it's pretty cool. You think you're the goat in this league? <laughs> no, I can't say that. There's a lot of other guys that are definitely um, pretty fast, but we'll see. A long season up ahead, and uh, these cars are pretty well even. Pretty much anybody can win one of these things, you know. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see how the year brings us. Well, hopefully I'll catch some more broadcasts, but uh, before you go, you got anybody like to thank? Any sponsors? Oh, yeah, I got to definitely thank USRA for putting this on. Uh, Jamie Leach, sponsored this race, wasn't able to make it. Shout out to him, uh, especially for putting on the show. Um, my teammates that were running with me are Randy B and Chase Berry, and I believe uh, Keith Bouchard was watching. So uh, I want to say thanks to those guys. Awesome, man. Great run, and uh, I'm going to send it back up to Roger. 
Yeah, you heard from your top or two of your top three drivers here tonight. Evan Pienta is going to pull off the big W here in the season opener. Doyle Lawrence, a strong competitor, showing his hand here this season that he is going to be somebody to reckon with throughout the season. Justin Wilson, just like he did all last season in both the Xfinity and the Cup car, running up front, leading the most laps. Unfortunately, not going to lead the last one. Luke LaFaro finishes fourth, and Dan Dill will finish out your top five here tonight in your Great Lakes Brewing 250, presented by Jamie Leach. You know, Dobbs, it was a pleasure having you in the booth here with me on a Tuesday night. Next week, though, the USRA Sim Speed Shop Series will head to the little track in the Iowa Cornfields. It's the Iowa Speedway here on Tuesday night. You know, um, what more to say than we're going racing in corn country. But for all of us here at the Turn 3 Racing Network, we got to thank everybody for tuning in throughout this pandemic that's striking the world right now. We hope we eased your mind and you enjoyed what you saw here tonight, you can catch the USRA Sim Speed Shop series every Tuesday night right here on your Turn 3 Racing Network. Until then, race fans, stay safe out there, and we will catch you at the next one.